Hey, I'm having another baby. As for the title of this video, we are expecting our 10th baby. And if you are expecting, if you want to be pregnant, if you've got a bunch of kids at home and have thoughts about being pregnant again, I want to invite you to stick around for this video and process all the feels with me. But first, we need to caffeinate. There is nothing like a hot cup of coffee when you really need it. If you are new here, my name is Lisa Canning. I'm a mom of soon to be 10 children, ages 13 all the way down to a nine month old. And I am a life coach and business coach primarily for Catholic moms. I love helping moms unlock their potential in motherhood and in business. And I have a few thoughts. I have more than a few thoughts about <laughs> being pregnant again for the 10th time. And so I want to share with you a bunch of different feelings. If you have any questions while you watch this video, just feel free to put them in the comments below. First off, let me know in the comments, are you currently expecting and how many kids do you have? So as I've been sharing the news with people in my real life here where I live in Ave Maria, Florida, people have been asking me like, okay, well, were you surprised by the timing? And the honest answer is we're never really surprised when we get pregnant because we know exactly how they get here. So it's not like <laughs> we're not really surprised when we are pregnant. But I will say that this one has come up a lot faster than my other pregnancies. So my first four babies are all almost the day 18 months apart. And then they got progressively more and more spaced out. Again, not intentionally. I have a whole other video about am I done having babies that you can check out right here in the cards. Spoiler alert. Obviously, we're not done having babies. But I share a little bit about, again, some of the things that I had to grapple with and wrestle with and uh, become uh, just more comfortable with as we were growing our family uh, so rapidly. So the babies one through four were 18 months apart. And then as we've had more, the spacing just naturally got a little bit, a little bit more. So 20 months, 22 months, 24 months. And so I kind of just thought, oh yeah, this will be exactly like that as well. This one is right back to 18 months. So Andrew is uh, nine months old at time of recording, and this baby is due in the spring. So this would put them exactly 18 months apart. So I was surprised by the timing. I wasn't surprised that we got pregnant, but I was surprised a little bit by the timing. And if I'm being really honest, I was excited about the baby, but I felt very nervous about my exhaustion level. And here's something I really want to share that's like so on my heart. You can have the feeling of being excited for a baby, but you can also have feelings of fear, of uncertainty, like that does not negate or um, make not valid those feelings. It doesn't also cancel out that you're excited about the baby. When people ask me, like, aren't you nervous? Like, aren't you tired? Aren't you worried about being pregnant and what that's gonna do to your ability to be a good mom? You know, these are normal, natural questions. And honestly, I think, like, every mom should be asking themselves that question because of course they wanna be a good mom. They wanna like show up well for their kids. They wanna be able to uh, serve well the people in their lives. Like of course, these are natural questions. But I think a lot of unnecessary suffering can happen by worrying about things that haven't happened. The best advice my spiritual director gives me, and he gives it to me basically every time we meet, is to simply live five minutes at a time. He actually gave me a very specific challenge to just be completely in one task at one time. You know, he was like, you're really good at multitasking, I know. And I was like, duh, I'm a business owning mom of 10, like, yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm gonna invite you to enter into a period of obedience where you only do and think about the one thing in front of you 
at that time. And it's sage advice because so much stress comes from the what ifs and the worry and the is this going to work out and the majority of the time these things don't even happen. And so while it is normal and natural and even I would say like a sign that you are a great cognizant mom who cares about her kids to have these kinds of thoughts, to be worried about how you're going to get things done. I just, I now have so much experience and so much evidence that the things get done and that the Lord provides the grace and the time and the strength. He is not going to abandon you even when sometimes it feels like he has. Hear me loud and clear. He does not abandon his people. You might feel like it's happening, but what's happening is you are growing in reliance on him. You are growing in your intimacy with him. My spiritual director recently was like, saints would be lining up for some of the things you're going through right now, Lisa. They would be lining up to take your place. And I was like, let them take it. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But... My point is, is that we have got to remember, and this is why spiritual direction, coaching, all these things are so essential. When we forget, we need to be reminded that the Lord does not abandon his people. And in fact, it's this time to pick up your cross, to hold it, to hug it, to share it with others when you are struggling, when you are exhausted, when you feel nauseous, share that burden with others. Tell people, hey, do you think you could help me out by cooking extra dinner and like bringing it to my house this week? Like sharing the load, sharing the burden, the cross that you might be carrying right now, but that the Lord never abandons you. And he is very likely inviting you into a deeper intimacy with him. And that is something that like is never a bad thing. Is it difficult to trust the Lord when you feel like he has abandoned you or when you are barfing in the morning and your toddler is ripping apart your pantry or when your husband doesn't understand? Is it difficult to trust the Lord when it feels like the cards are stacked against you? Yes, of course. But what I am encouraged by and what I want to encourage you in is that the Lord is so generous he never ceases to provide and to go back just a very practical thing that you can do that I do that I'm encouraged to do don't always do but when you feel like no the Lord is not providing or the Lord is not here go back in your own history and recall all the ways the Lord has provided This is an incredibly, incredibly practical and helpful thing that I think any Jesus-loving person should have as a regular routine. You know, if I'm being really honest, there have definitely been times in my life where I've been like, this is not a convenient time to have a baby. We were moving across country uh, and dealing with so many immigration things when we moved here, and I was very pregnant with Colleen. And I just remember thinking, like, this is a not convenient time. But again, the Lord is not outdone in his generosity. He provided all the things we needed and then some. We've navigated Colleen being in hospital with RSV right after she came out. We were right back in there. That was a very scary experience. But I think I've just come to a place in my life and my motherhood and my marriage where I'm becoming more grateful for the suffering. I still pray that it be really short. (laughs) I still pray that it be really short. But I've gotten to this place where I'm becoming more grateful for the suffering because I do see the fruits that it provides. You know, I I had a recent business loss or a recent business frustration where I shared very vulnerably that I know I would not have run to the Lord like I did when it happened if the if the if the summit went fantastically well financially. Like I I just I know I probably wouldn't have. Whereas I was 
running into his arms, running to the foot of the cross. And that was extremely valuable. And so will it sometimes be difficult? Will you sometimes experience pain? Will you sometimes experience inconvenience and timing that maybe doesn't make sense to you? Sure. But can it all be meaningful and can it all be for you and for your sanctity and for your closeness and your ability to bring other people to Jesus like your spouse and your children 100%. I think that's probably the thing that brings me the most joy and consolation. When I think when you're in the middle of it, it's terrible. When you are in the middle of feeling awful and nauseous and, you know, like you can't function, of course, it's really terrible. But when you're on the other side, when you have a little bit of perspective, even if it's only like an hour of perspective, like an hour of feeling better, when you are on that other side, you're like, why did I not trust the Lord? And that's why it's just so important to constantly recall all the ways that you can trust him and continue to trust him. Oh my gosh, Lord, look at all the ways that you provide. Oh my gosh, Lord, look at all the ways that you have shown me in the past that I can trust you. It's immense. I challenge you to do it. I challenge you to just constantly recall. I do have, if I'm honest, a lot of thoughts around time that I have to coach myself on and then and time running out. So one of my thoughts when we discovered we were pregnant was just some fear around my plate already feels very full how am i going to get some of the things done that i need to get done and the thing that i find challenging as a business owner is that i can sometimes feel like the business won't get done or the things that you know will make me money or the things that are really essential for my family how are they all going to get done and, you know, I talk to my spiritual director about this all the time. I get coached on this all the time. Things get done. Children do not starve. And honestly, so much of our drama can come from our expectations around things. So much of our drama can come from the what if thoughts and the fear and the dread of things that have not even happened. Might things look a little different than you intended? Absolutely. Might you need to move things around and apologize to people because deadlines need to be extended? Sure. But what I really like to, I coach my clients on this a lot and I've been coaching myself, is asking the question, what's the worst case scenario here? So for example, I had a deadline and I really wanted to make it and I was making it mean a lot of negative things about me if I wasn't gonna hit that deadline. And so I just had to coach myself and ask myself, okay, what's the worst case scenario if you don't meet this deadline? You're gonna attempt it, and if you don't finish it, you're gonna get it to people tomorrow. And that's it. And as soon as I was able to kind of just like think that way, it relieved a lot of pressure, it relieved a lot of unnecessary suffering, and the thing got done. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I find with time is that I can make things take a lot longer than necessary. And one of my just favorite things about being a mom of as many children as I have is that I've had to learn how to do things in short bursts of time so that I can do things like hang out with my kids, go on a date with my husband and take a nap. Like really and truly, these are just like essential things that are so important to me priorities that I want to protect, priorities I will fight to protect, and to just trust the Lord that he will provide the energy and the time necessary for you and that all the things will get done. I have enough evidence in my life that that is the case, and so I really want to share that with you, that I did not believe this before, and now when I look objectively at my life and the number of things that we manage, Things do get done, and it is honestly by God's grace. He can multiply time. He can, you know, honestly just give you the energy to finish the things that you need to finish. So when it comes to energy and time, I just, it really comes down to trusting the Lord that he will get done. He will give you the grace to get done the things that you need to get done.
I think on the topic of energy and time, it has also just really, again, illuminated for me how important it is to coach yourself, to have a coach, and to really just be cognizant that your thoughts impact your feelings, which then impact your actions. You know, even just like a prime, like prime example, at when I went to record this video, I was feeling a little bit like, ugh, like, okay, like, do I really want to do this? Do I really have the energy? But then once I started thinking about it and getting clear on what I wanted to say and who I wanted to say it for, that excitement and motivation came really quick. So I really just, I believe this so strongly as a mindset coach and it's something that I'm constantly offering to my clients is that, yeah, absolutely, we can be in bad moods and sometimes we just need to pause and rest and let that bad mood like just take over your body and just pause. But other times we don't need to rely on being in a great mood to get things done. And in fact, the opposite may be true, that the doing of the thing is actually gonna put you in a great mood. But I think the challenge is we pay too close attention or we give too much credence to the fact like, oh no, like I'm feeling sluggish. I really don't wanna do this today. I'm gonna wait until I feel motivated. Well, guess what? Feeling motivated comes from your thoughts. You can think a thought that's gonna help you get to that feeling of motivation. And then you can do the thing, you know? Again, all of this needs to be discerned with proper just like taking into account that we need to sleep, that we need to rest, that we are human beings, created corporeal, like we need to rest, but to not negate that our thoughts are so powerful when our human bodies perhaps are not um, you know, producing the energy that we desire. Our thoughts can be incredibly, incredibly powerful um, in that regard. I sometimes get asked, do you fear that you won't give the baby enough attention or other kids won't have enough attention because now you are so busy? And here's the thing I wanna share. The, my, one of my favorite 30 minutes to spend in my house is the 30 minutes the kids come home from school and almost exclusively, like every single one of them, asks immediately, where's Andrew? But there's this like special bond every single one of the kids has with the baby. And it's particularly sweet to see my oldest child with the baby. I think it's just like, it's cute. The size difference is just immense. He's like a giant, he's so tall and he's still so small and they just like, everybody gets so charismatic and loving and um, they just they just love to hold him. And so I don't expect it to be any different with, um, with a brand new little baby. It'll be also really interesting to watch Andrew with a little baby. I get asked this all the time, like, did you know you were gonna have such a large family? And I really, really know. <laughs> I come from two. My parents got married much later in life. I wasn't really exposed to that many large families, so I didn't even have it as a as a thing on my radar. And what changed for me though was just understanding the power of the union of marriage. And I remember so distinctly in those early years of, of marriage, those early, um, you know, like just discovering what happens when you get married and you're intimate, you know, for the first time. I just remember, I remember thinking very distinctly, how would you not want a life to come from this much joy, from this much love? Like I remember thinking that so distinctly. And um, I just had a radical change of heart. I was somebody who really, like I shared this in my book, The Possibility Mom, I, yeah, I really like, I thought I was gonna get married really late in life uh, and, and, and focus on building wealth and, and great emphasis on my career. Like that's just what I thought you did. Like those were the things that I thought were important. And when I started to experience just the power that comes from, you know, that, that intimacy with your spouse and 
the joy of, of babies, like the sincere joy and gift that come with these little sweet babies. Um, I just had a radical, like a truly radical change of heart. I didn't know how to live that out in my life. <laughs> I didn't know what that looked like in practice. I talk about that a lot here on this channel. Uh, you know, if you go back to some of my older videos, like there was a lot of navigation of like, what does this look like? What does time management look like when you have this many babies? And so, of course, this is now what I coach other moms on now. And I invite you to take a peek if, if you would love to get coached by a seasoned mom. I've got lots of ways that I work with moms and I'll put those in the description below. But yeah, it was a, a really radical shift. And again, I just really at the heart of why we are open to having children and why we're never surprised when we get pregnant is that we simply trust the Lord. We trust the Lord. We trust his plans. He has never steered us wrong. A lot of discernment goes into these big decisions, these big life decisions like having another baby. And for us, we just have so much evidence that he always provides. But of course, we're human. And so there are all kinds of feelings. And I just really want to share loud and clear that having feelings of doubt or fear or like, Lord, can I really trust you? Don't have to take away from your feelings of joy and excitement. Like meaning they don't kind of cancel each other out just because you have these honest feelings is because you are an honest human being. But the filter that I invite you to put everything through is the filter of, of prayer. And this, this filter of trustful surrender to divine providence. This is a book that I read basically daily <laughs> because I need, this, I need this all the time in my life. I need this all the time. And, and, and just to remember that it's, Everything in our life is to make us holy. Everything, business, motherhood, marriage, like all of this is simply a preparation for an eternal relationship. And I think when I, when I put that in context, like when I can zoom the camera out from feeling tired, from feeling nauseous, from feeling like, how on earth am I gonna get all of these things done? When I zoom the camera out from some of those very honest thoughts, and I can look at a more eternal timeline, like the timeline of salvation history, of which we all play a part. It really helps with some of my human, my natural human um, frailties, to be honest, right? The human beings are, can sometimes be frail, you know, like our bodies can be frail. We can only go so many hours without sleep and without food, you know, these are, we need to necessarily take care of our bodies. But we also cannot forget about the power of God's grace and the Holy Spirit and how much the true agent is the Holy Spirit and how much change can be made possible by trusting in his grace. So I wanna invite you, all you mamas who are navigating hormones and all the things, the bloating and the pain and the doubt and the worry, all of you, you have a seat at my table here. I wanna invite you on this journey as we prepare for baby number 10 and as I navigate my business and my motherhood and my home, just come, all right, come right along for the adventure. Hit the subscribe button and that bell so you can be alerted when new videos come. And I've made for you a playlist around welcoming a new baby because I've done a few of these videos in the past. So don't forget to click right here so you can watch all those videos on welcoming a new baby. And I will see you on the other side.